Welcome to Fine Element Methods. During this tutorial, the weak form Galerkian will be used to solve the advection diffusion equation in 1D. The conservation principle of either material or energy in a 1D model with control volume delta x is described by this differential equation. A D d theta dx, where A is the is the cross section area. V um, let's call this V U just for to avoid confusion later. So this this U, so A U, U is the um, is the velocity of the fluid, which only varies along x. And theta is the concentration of the species or energy. So the derivative of this with respect to x um, minus the derivative with respect to x of the product between a, the area, the cross-section area, K, the diffusivity, and the theta dx minus S equal to zero is the equation for the advection diffusion problem when um, the fluid moving in the medium is incompressible. And the relation between the diffusion Q and the theta dx is linear. So the first term is related with the advection. And the second term is related with the diffusion. Two boundary conditions are identified in this in this equation, in this problem. The essential boundary condition is related with the primary variable, which is theta. And the natural boundary condition is related um, with, um, with the diffusion term. So it will be uh, k d theta dx equal to q bar. Uh, for the general case, all right? One application of the advention diffusion equation is in mass transport. So if we consider the area um, as one, and so if we, if we assume constant area, let's say we assume constant area, um, this equation um, ux or u d theta dx minus dx d dx of d um, d theta dx dx where d is the is the diffusivity term is equivalent to the k in the previous equation plus kr times theta, where kr is the reaction rate that accounts for the reaction between the dilute species and its surroundings mm, is equal to m, where m is, um, is external source of mass. Okay, so um, with this equation, um, we can now, once, once we, since we set this, this equation, we can move now to a more applicable uh, problem of mass transport uh, to solve it by the um, approximate theory of the weak form um, Galerkin. So a one-dimensional aquifer um, is modeled using a control laboratory experiment. The aquifer has constant area and length one meter and contaminated fluid moving through it. 
A chemical contaminant is measured to have a concentration of zero at x equals zero. So that's our essential boundary condition. The contaminant reacts with its surroundings with the rate constant Kr as it moves through the aquifer. It is known that the chemical substance will diffuse in the medium with diffusion D and the flux of the material is also known at x equals one. We want to compute the steady state distribution of chemical contaminant in the aquifer using the weak form Galerkin. Let's assume constant velocity of the fluid for simplicity. Okay, so we start from the strong form of the problem. So u theta prime minus d theta double prime plus kr theta is equal to zero. So it means that our residual R is equal to U theta prime minus D theta double prime. Sorry, this is not tilde. Uh, I just jumped ahead. Let me erase this, okay. So D theta double prime plus QR theta. All right. So um, to apply the weak form Galerkian, we need to find first the weak form of the problem. So to find the weak form of the problem, we take the product, we integrate the product between the residual and the weighted function V to identify those terms which can be, whose de derivatives can be balanced. So let's expand this expression. So it will be u v theta prime minus d v theta double prime plus k r v theta dx. Right, so let's take a look to the first term. In this term, we cannot balance the derivatives, right? Because uh, if we move the derivative from theta to v, we will have uv prime theta. So we cannot balance, balance the derivatives. However, for the second term, we, we can do it, right? We can balance the derivatives between v and theta double prime. And for the third term, we cannot um, I mean, they are already balanced, so we don't need to, we, we can just leave it lay, like, like it is. So to balance the derivative, we take, um, we integrate by parts. So let's take by, this integrate by parts, the second term. So the weighted function V goes to the left and um, theta prime, double prime goes to the right. V gains one derivative, so theta loses one, of the derivatives. Now we balance the derivatives, right? So the product between V and theta prime will be account for the boundary term. And the product between V prime and theta prime is the one that goes back to the integral. So the integral can be right now, can be, can be written um, as the integral between zero and L of the product uv theta prime a plus d v theta prime a, sorry d v prime theta prime right is the product um, the last product we we had um, plus k r v uh, theta Now we add the second product, which is V uh, times theta prime. So we have, uh, this is minus, right? Yeah, minus. So we have minus a V D theta prime between zero evaluated at zero at an L. So this V is related, which is the weighted function is related with the essential boundary condition. 
in other words, theta, and the second term here, d theta prime is related with a natural boundary condition, which is related with Q, which is the flux of the material, right? The flux of the material. All right, so we just have, we, I mean, we just found the, the, the weak form of the problem. Let's rewrite um, this um, weak form of the problem by expanding the boundary terms. So G is a function of theta and V is the integral between zero and L of U V theta prime plus D V prime theta prime plus K R V theta um, dx, nothing new. Let's expand the boundary terms. So first we evaluate V at L and Q at L plus V evaluated at zero uh, times Q evaluated at zero. Okay, this is all equal to zero, right? So um, what is the next step? I mean, we, we already have the weak form. Let's say this is, let's write it down. This is the weak form of the problem. This is the weak form of the problem. So now we need to solve this, 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 this equation. And when we solve this equation, uh, we know that we need to come up with a, with a proximate function to solve for this, for this equation. So let's start first by the trial function. So the trial function omega tilde is equal to a0 plus a1 xl plus a2 xl. So that's the polynomial I choose as my original guess. So the weak form Galerkian only requires to satisfy only requires that the trial or the approximate function uh, satisfies the essential boundary condition. So let's look at the essential boundary condition we have in our problem. So W tilde at zero should be equal to zero. It means that A zero is equal to zero. So we can rewrite W tilde X as A1 XL, X over L plus A2 X over L. All right, so um, what is next? Just to get the approximate function. And in this case, thanks to the weak form Galerkian, it, turn out, it turns out to be very easy to, to calculate. So in theta tilde x is just C1 times the first basis function, which is x over L. So this is the first basis function, C1, plus C2 x. Oh, okay, one second, I miss the square. Wow, sorry. I miss the square in the terms A2, A2, C2. Now we have the square here, right? So we're, we're good. So we're, we're good here. Um, Remember that the polynomial needs to be complete. So if we look, if we look at the approximate function, um, the approximate function is complete, right? It's complete if we evaluate the essential, if we evaluate this approximate function at zero is equal to zero. So it means that it satisfies the boundary condition. Also, it seems to be, as, I mean, uh, this, this, this equation is as smooth, it's complete, uh, satisfy the essential boundary condition. Um, and one more thing is, is we, we can take the number of derivatives um, required um, in the inside, in the, in the integral, inside in the integral um, without uh, uh, getting zero inside, right? So that's, that, that, that's okay. So this approximate function is fine. So let's now 
Eh, eh, take this approximate function and substitute it in the weak form. So G as a function of theta tilde and the first basis function phi one is equal to the integral between zero and L of U um, phi one theta tilde prime plus d phi one prime theta tilde prime plus kr phi one theta tilde dx. Now the boundary terms, right? So phi one at L is equal to one and Q at L is equal to Q bar plus phi one at zero is equal to zero. So on all of this is equal to zero. We can have that for G, let's call this G1, this G2. So we have that for G2, the only modification is phi two. So So we have that the integral between C and L of U phi two theta tilde prime plus D phi two theta tilde prime um, plus KR phi two theta tilde, we are done with the integral. Now the boundary term is just phi two at L, same as the previous equation, it goes to one times Q bar because it's Q evaluated at L and phi two at zero, this goes to zero times Q zero. So that's equal to zero. So it means that the only term we retain from the boundary is, is this, these two guys, right? One from the first equation and the other one from the second equation. So if you want to write this in a general form, in, in, I mean, in, 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 the, in the finalized form, we can have that gj of eval n as a function of theta tilde and phi j is just integral of zero of L of U phi J theta tilde prime plus D phi J theta tilde prime. <clears throat> yes, plus KR phi two theta uh, tilde DX minus Q bar, and that's all equal to zero. Where J, it's any, it take, uh, takes the values of, or the indices one and two. So we have two equations, two unknowns, where the unknowns are C1 and C2. All we need to solve is this system of equations. So, if we solve the system of equation, this yellow line represent, is the exact solution of our problem. And this blue line is the solution from the weak form Galerkian. It doesn't match perfectly, but it's, I think it's still good considering that we were this is the solution from the weak form. So we are breaking the continuity um, in, in the solution, right? By this method. Now let's compare the weak form Galerkian solution versus the strong form Galerkian solution. So again, the yellow is the exact solution. So in this plot, we have the weak form Galerkian 
And in this plot, we have the strong form Galerkian. The strong form Galerkian um, is, um, is closer to the exact solution. Um, but remember that the strong form Galerkian um, requires to satisfy both the natural and the essential boundary conditions. And if we can um, reduce the, 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 the complexity of, of the solution by weakening by weaken the, the, the strong form and still get a, a decent solution like this, I think is, is sufficient. <laughs>